Hello, I'm Rebecca Bennyworth and I'm here to introduce the summer edition of the Bankstream Accountants Confidence Index, uh, which is an ongoing collaboration with Accounting Web. With me to discuss the index and the findings are uh, from Bankstream, I have Frank Woods, and uh, Accounting Web editor John Stockdyke. Welcome both. Uh, so, John, what do you think are the main findings this time from the uh, index? Okay, well, we, we did our polling in, in early May, so it's, it's impossible to, to avoid the sort of political context with the general election going on. And what we saw was, was an improvement from 7.1 to 7.2 over the past quarter. So I really take that as it looks like accountants you know, did welcome the return of a business-friendly uh, conservative government. Now, interestingly, uh, you know, we always go in and look at the results earlier on, and the co right after the election, the, 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 it was much higher. It was, it was, it was jumping up to 7.3, and the accountants' view of their own business opportunities were brilliant, but then we saw kind of it sinking back down, so it wasn't quite as, as euphoric by the time the survey closed a few weeks later. Okay, John, that's very interesting. Um, and I guess not only reality kicking in, but people getting back to work and getting on with the next task in our sort of annual cycle of work to be done, um, which I guess is starting to face up to P11D work and things like that. Um, so can you take me behind the figures? Can you tell me a little bit more about uh, some, of, some of the background to those figures? Okay, well, we'll there is, we, we've got some interesting observations beginning to emerge about the accountants' expectations of their own performance in their businesses, uh, but then find, again, unfulfilled expectations that, that last time they were very optimistic, they scored their, their own prospects at 7.3, but this quarter when they're looking back, the reality was, was 7.0. So, so, so they thought things would be getting better, but they haven't, didn't actually do the work necessary and make the changes or just didn't live up to their own expectations. That's a very interesting quirk. I've, um, I'd be quite interested as we go on whether, if we're giving this feedback to our, to our members, whether they begin to adjust and get more realistic, or if we'll always have this, it's going to be... This better. lag between what they think they're going to achieve and what, what they actually achieve. It, yeah, it's quite interesting to, to wonder about why that might be, why they're so optimistic about what's going to happen in the next quarter, even when faced with the evidence of not having achieved it. As you say, it may adjust their behaviour in predicting. Well, one thing that Frank uh, raised last quarter um, that was about the growth, the constraints on growth within firms and, and their small business clients. So, so we decided to look a bit into that more, particularly in the area of, of fee levels, which yeah. have been quite lively on accounting web. Uh, so we, we specifically asked a question about this, and, and surprisingly, nearly two-thirds of our members were affected in some way by the fee squeeze. Uh, the largest group, 43.8%, uh, just felt unable to increase their fees this year. With the kind of, particularly with all the headlines about low inflation, there's too much of a risk of alienating clients there. Yeah. Then another 14.5%, uh, we're actually getting pressure from clients to reduce their fees and I think the sign there we're getting is, is really you're going to begin to have to to prove your value to your clients much more and finally 5% have actually lost clients to other other firms who are offering cheaper uh, cheaper fees so that's again confirming this view that compliance work is being commoditized and squeezing margins so th that's quite a shocking mm effect on the profession and I think does explain a lot of the sort of fail to live up to expectations yeah. and, and why why firms aren't able to grow as much as they would hope. Yeah I mean one of the problems I think for firms now is that um, if what you're doing is providing a, a, essentially a, a clerical service of computing account, uh, accounts um, after the end of the year um, and filling in a tax return you're not seen as a valuable business aid by, mm. by businesses. You're seen as an overhead. Um, and all businesses are looking to cut overheads. So the accountant, in, in terms of as a role in the business, 
has actually got to become something more than somebody who just fills in, in forms. I think that's absolutely essential. That's going to be the key to growth because um, you, you can't go on doing the same old thing and expecting people to pay more for it. I don't think businesses expect to pay the same for it. I think they do expect to pay less. Um, and, you know, I, I really do think that accountants have got to get out there and, and become valuable to their clients. And then actually, I suspect they'll be able to increase their fees because they won't be seen as a cost anymore. So I think it's very interesting. Hmm. I think if you, um, that evolution, that, that growth in the, in the service provisions, one thing, the other part of it is the compliance work that does sit there today um, still exists. Yep. And if we can make that profitable, that's, yeah. that's going to be really uh, an advantage to them. Because there's another thing going on here as well, and that is uh, recent surveys that have come out about wages are showing that wages and salaries inside the profession are increasing. So you've got an overworked position, um, an inability to raise fees in a low inflation environment, plus wage increases. So there's a real squeeze yeah. coming on. And I think uh, for accountants, well, looking at the survey and some of the results we're getting there, they're starting to look at technology starting to look at automating processes, and if you can automate a process inside a compliance environment, then you can make it a profitable part of your practice. Um, at the moment, uh, the survey is showing that 32% of practices are already using bank data feeds or automated feeds, and another 24% are looking at it and are planning to investigate it in the, uh, in the short term. I'm not sure what the other 40-something percent are doing. Perhaps they should be uh, taking heed as well. But that's a really interesting point. Um, if you, there, is, there is money to be made out of compliance, but you've really got to look to your computers and look to your technology and automation yeah. to, to help you do that. And I think, well, if you can do that while you're evolving towards greater service provision and more profitable work, it's probably the best of both worlds if yeah. I can achieve it. I, I, I mean, obviously, even with the, the alleged end of the tax return by 2020, um, I think that that level of, of basic compliance work is going to have to be done. You're absolutely right, Frank. Uh, and you know, obviously, what the profitable and the successful firm will be doing will be doing that as cheaply as possible. Yeah. So you aren't paying people a lot of money um, to faff about with terrible record keeping. You've got something on record keeping, haven't you, in the in the survey? Yeah. And that, yeah. yeah, that remains, again, probably one of those underlying pain points and problems with, within the small businesses who, again, lag behind practitioners in their prospects for the next quarter. Uh, this time, the problem, the problem as perceived by advisors went up from, I think it was 38% to 41%. Mm -hmm. So, so that hasn't really gone away. Yeah. Well, that's been a fascinating discussion. It's all we've got time for. Uh, but if you'd like the detailed results yourself, you can download them. They're at www.accountingweb.co.uk forward slash bankstream. <laughs> <laughs>